Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's get started with a little two voice and we will start with the defense attorney. Ready? Here we go. Did Miss Warner leave you while you, you were still at your car at the gas station? After I gave her my gun, I left her and went down to the Regency room. You gave her this pistol that is marked Exhibit 14 right there. Is that correct? That's right. Did she tell you what she was going to do with it? She told me that she knew how to make money. I gave her my gun. I told her that she had to give me $20 for using it and return it back to me by Tuesday. Did she say she would return it Tuesday or did you say you wanted it by Tuesday? She said she would return it Tuesday. Now up until the time you gave her this pistol, have you ever fired it? No, I never fired it. Did you ever put bullets in it? Did I ever put bullets in it? Yes, did you? The bullets that I put in, I put them in when I took it from Holden. You said that you took this gun out of a car, is that correct? That's right. You took it some months before June 14, is that right? That's right. When you took it out of the car, was it loaded? It had two bullets in it. It had two bullets in it? Yeah. Did you know how to load the bullets into this gun? I knew how to operate it. All right, and did you put some more bullets in it? I put some more bullets in it. When you gave this gun to Mary Warner, how many bullets were in it? There were as many bullets in it as the gun holds, probably six. Then you drove away from there, is that right? I drove away and went to the Regency room, yeah. transcript now. And we will start with the plaintiff attorney. Ready? Okay, and then, and this would be on the, on the north shoulder, approximately how far to the west or to the east of that, of that prolongation that we have crossing. I'm going to put from A to B. We refer to that as the westerly prolongation. Do you see that? Yes. How long, at how far to the west or to the east of that, of that AB westerly prolongation of Spring Road would it be? I don't know. I can't. You're not sure if it was west or east? Correct. Okay, and the van? You mentioned that the van, when it was when it was parked, when you first got there, would have been actually on the shoulder or on, I'm sorry, on, was it on the shoulder or Spring Road? The shoulder of Spring Road, so it would be on Spring Road, but on Spring Road shoulder, if I put it in this direction here, would it be, uh, how far was the rear of the van from the southern, at the southern white line on Crestview? Maybe eight feet, okay. And was it pointed, obviously, in the Spring Road direction? Yes, so southwesterly position, like so, yeah. Okay, I'll just put van. You understood that the van had been moved from the moment of impact to that point in one way or another, yes. Okay, same thing with the motorcycle. We've established that, yes. All right, so, okay, on page three, we have recorded here. You've recorded some witnesses, is that right? Yes, Ron Harris, yes. And you didn't know him before the day of the accident, correct? No. And did you interview him? No. Do you know who did? If anybody did, I believe, can I look at my report? Sure, absolutely. Officer Scott interviewed Mr. Harris. Did you ever talk to Mr. Harris? I don't believe so. I have somewhat of a recollection of possibly calling the witnesses back to confirm what they told the officer, but that could have been from another collision. It was so long ago, I don't recall if I called them to double check their statement or if I just took the statement from Officer Scott, okay, or the officer that interviewed the other. Okay, so on occasion, what you'll do is get statements from witnesses and then you'll 
phone them back up and go over the statement just to reconfirm things. Correct. In this case, you're not certain if you did that or not. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. And then with regard to Scott, have you had any conversations with Scott about this accident? No. Did he give you some notes about the statements that he took of these witnesses? Yes. And is that the notes that you would have used to formulate the statements of these people? Yes. On Harris, what page is his statement on? His statement is on page 21, beginning at the top. You say, it says, quote, witness related to Officer Scott the following, and then you have the word in essence, correct? What, you, what do you mean by in essence? Because he's written down his, the statement obtained from the party of the witness, right? And it's unknown to me if those were every single word of his words or if he had abbreviated them or something like that. And so that's why I put in essence, because a lot of times people will use words that fill in, but we just try to keep everything to the point. Once again, you sign the bottom of this sheet of page 21, correct? Correct. But did you, you did not take the statement of Harris, correct? Correct. And what you did was you asked Scott to give you his notes, and then you, from his notes, you formulated the statement, correct? Okay, you tried to do it as accurately as you could, I'm sure, yes. And with regard to Tom Stanley, I'm working page 21. Did you ever speak with Tom Stanley? Again, I'm not certain if I recalled him later on to confirm what he had stated a lot of times. If I called them and confirmed that's what they stated, if they don't have anything else to add, then I just leave the statement as is. If there's anything additional, then I will add that in when I call them again. I don't recall if it happened or not. You're not sure if you if you actually spoke to Tom Stanley as follow-up is what you're saying, correct? Okay, let me ask this. Did you speak to Tom Stanley at the scene of the accident? I don't believe so. Okay, if you did, I guess you don't remember anything that was. It would have just been, did you witness this collision? Him saying yes, and then me holding on to his information until another officer could interview him. Just so I have it correct as to Tom Stanley, you have no memory today of actually speaking with to him at the scene, correct so far? Correct. If you did, your protocol would have been just to get his contact information and ask him if he saw the accident. Have him stay at the scene. A lot of times there's other things I'm doing and witnesses and I will have another officer give their statement to help me out because I'm doing measurements and things like that. But if you would have spoken to him, understanding you don't have memory of doing so, if you would have you, your protocol would be to ask him if he saw the accident and if he said yes, you got his contact information and maybe have another officer get involved and take it from there. Correct. Again, you have no distinct memory of talking to him since the day of the accident. Correct. Yes. And how about Bill Barton? Once again, did you speak to Bill Barton at the scene of the accident? No. Did you ever contact Bill Barton as a follow-up call? I'm not sure. Okay. If you did, you don't have any memory of doing it today. Correct. Okay. Whatever is attributed to Bill Barton would have been what you would have typed using the notes of Officer Marks, is that correct? Yes, and whatever is put here for Tom Stanley, it's also whatever you would have put down here, typed down from the notes of Officer Marks, correct? Do you still have those notes by chance? No. What do you do with the notes you get from other officers, like the notes you got from Rios, Harris, Stanley, and Barton? Once we put those witness statements into the report or the any statement onto the report, then the, the actual copies are destroyed. Do you know if anyone in the course of this investigation ever called the witnesses, read them the statements you attributed to them, and had them document? Yes, that's exactly what I remember. I'm not sure. Okay, you don't have a memory of doing that, right? Okay, I could have. I may not have. I don't know. Okay, if we look at page 4, you did not prepare this, is that right? That is the sketch that I did prepare that. All right, let's try okay. let's try to finish the rest of the Warm up that we started earlier. All right, and this will start with the defense attorney. Ready? Here we go. 
Did you go to the Regency room or go to Mr. Holden's? I went to the Regency room first. I stayed a few minutes talking to my friend. And then I, well, I stayed with him about five minutes. Then I drove over to Madison Street and took his car to him. Can you tell me what time it was when you drove to Madison Street to deliver the car? All I know is what time it was when I left. What time was it when you left? Well, when the old man called me, he told me it was 6.30. I said I was supposed to have the car back at 5 o'clock, and I don't have the car back. Then you left at 6.30. Is that correct? That's right. It was somewhere along in there. I don't know what time it was. All I know is that it was about that time. All right. When your car was parked on the filling station lot, you spoke to Stanley Strong and to Mary Warner. Is that right? That's right. Can you tell us about how much time was used up while you spoke to Stanley Strong and Mary Warner? Do you mean all together? Yes. Well, I would say maybe about 10, 15 minutes. All right. I don't know for sure. Would it be fair to say that at about quarter to seven, you drove away from that gas station? Well, I don't know. Maybe something along there. All right. And you went straight to the Regency room from that filling station. Is that right? That's right. Did it take you more than two or three minutes to drive to the Regency room? I don't think that it took me that long. It was just a couple of blocks down Wilmington, isn't it? About four or five blocks down there, yeah. And you only spent a couple of minutes in the Regency room. I only spent about five minutes, like I said. And that will conclude our Q&A practice.